and welcome. I am No Coffee, No Life. Today we are on the outskirts of Morgantown, and unlike previous videos, we are not at a pre-existing location. Today's video is about building a camp from scratch and making it look like it fits in the location that it's at. So if you're new to the game and building, stick around because this is a great way to pick up some tricks you might not have known. Now, for the most part, when building the actual house, I am using items that come with the base game. The only time you'll see me using items that don't come with the base game is when I'm making optional customizations to the building that really don't need to be there in the first place. It's just because of my personal preference and you could easily substitute them with things that are already in the game. Let's take a look at the location that we've picked out. It is bordered on one side by this creek and on the other by the road headed into Morgantown. The space between both the creek and the road is fairly level. There are a few locations in this spot where if you place something, it'll actually dip down under the landscape. And that is annoying, but it's Bethesda and you'll find that in a lot of places on the map. But enough about the game's features. Let's get started on the build. Now, this camp we're going to be making today is going to have a footprint of two by two. So you're going to use a total of four foundations and place them as you like at the location. I am putting them just a little away from the roadside and just slightly over the edge of the creek. I'm going to double wall these walls once I, of course, get them all going the same direction and Attention make my adjustments so that the house is pointing the way I want it to. So to make double walls, you're going to put a foundation on the outside of where you want the exterior of your house to be. So for this house, you're going to have essentially eight more foundations on the exterior, two on each side, and you're going to place a wall on the interior and a wall on the exterior. And every wall that you place is going to be a wall with a doorway. Because if you don't use the doorway wall, you won't be able to double wall your house. It's just how the game works. It's how Bethesda has coded it and that is how you will be able to double wall your home. Once they're all doorway walls, you can switch them out as you like. If you want one to be a corrugated metal wall and you want the other to be wood, you can do that. If you want one to be brick and you want the other to be metal, you can do that or wood or whatever. However you want to make your combination, you can do it at this point. Just so long as you've initially put them together as two door frame walls. I'm going to set this flame through or trap and we are going to place some flat roofs on the top of the structure. These are not going to be the roof choices I make for the final building. I'm just putting them there so we have a roof over our heads while we work. They're just placeholders and I know I don't really need to set them all at the same direction but I do it anyways. This is how the building looks right now. I'm gonna make a porch out back here do that I'm going to use the flamethrower trap. You won't automatically get this with other traps. You have to complete the Abby's Bunker quest chain and when you complete it you get rewarded with the flamethrower trap and another a number of other traps as part of that free states quest chain. I don't know why this lurker, this Flatwoods monster was here for the majority of the time I was building and he's just kind of hanging out over there. But regardless of the flatwood monster hanging out in the distance. We've made our porch and this area that I've highlighted is going to be the kitchen area but I'm going to block it off with this wall so that we're separated from the porch. I'm going to come back outside and look at the exterior to see how it's shaping up. I've got my my porch there. I've got to close it off and I have to make decisions about how I'm going to close it off. So I'm going to use a foundation stair, that fence post with the gate and a guard post to close it off. And that, that's pretty nice. It's, it's fairly simple. It's a straightforward porch. I'm going to burn the guard post so that I can put a wall here. Now that that's burnt, I can put a wall. 
and close off the bedroom area so that you can walk out onto the porch from the bedroom. And here's the basic shape of our interior for this house. It's pretty simple. It's not very elaborate. It's easy to put together. I'm not asking you to, you know, get some special parts to do it. It's everything that comes in the game. These barricades are with the base game and they work really well in a lot of locations. People, I think, kind of think of them as an afterthought or only think of them for military builds, but they make for nice decorations and to bulk up the exterior of your camp. And it doesn't have to be a military themed camp. You can use them. These barricades and the concrete barricades are kind of everywhere in Appalachia so feel free to use them. This perimeter wall with the stairs is another good one. I see them used also in the military camps but you can use them at your camp too. They are great for a raised space. If you want it on the outside against your camp they're perfect for it. Thank Just you. slap them down. You have to slap this particular one with the stairs first. Otherwise, if you try to use one of the others, it won't let you place because it requires that you have this stair piece to add other perimeter wall frames that don't have stairs. Why? I have no idea. It's just how it's coded. But we're going to place a second one just to the right of it without a stair, obviously. And, and this is going to be our space on the side of the house where I place our generators so that they're not on the ground. They're going to be raised up on this platform. Now, here I am adjusting our roof. Now I'm going to put two of these angled roofs in the front and then I'm going to cover them over with those straight angle roofs that form the A-frame. But I'm going to burn these two front pieces and I'm showing you that you could add a porch like this, like a covered entranceway if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that for this build. I'm just showing you that you could attach two more pieces and then if you wanted to attach a wall in front of there and then burn it, you could make your porch that way. I'm not doing it that way though. I'm going to show you a different way to make a porch in the front here. So these two pieces need to be burned so that I can place more of these roof pieces above. I'm gonna go ahead and burn these two corner roof sections, then place these angled roofs so that I can get the A-frame at the top. And once those four pieces are placed, I'm going to put the upper walls that are angled upper walls to close off the top of the house. Now that I have the entire roof up, you can see how it's going to look on the interior for the most part. And so here's what the house looks like right now. We're going to place this perimeter wall railing up here and this wall railing, this the variant, the, the half won't snap there, but it will for some reason snap here. That's fine. This is the side that faces the road. so. I, I can live without being able to place that one. On this side, you can place half walls or a full wall and block it off. I'm not going to because there's a window there and I want you to be able to see out from inside, from that spot inside the house. So I'm gonna take down these walls. I'm just showing it to you so that you have uh, an idea as to like an alternate for this side of the home. What I am going to place here is this fence to close off the side and I'm gonna place this guard post in the ground. I'm gonna place that roof and I'm placing these two power pylons as supports for the roof. I could place a wall here and then burn it, but it's going to look weird for the section that hits the ground because there's going to be a gap. No matter how low you try to drop your foundation, it just kind of never gets low enough to hide the bottom of the wall that's burnt. So I'm using these power pylons and they do a really good job. It's a nice alternative for making a porch using stuff that you already have. Have. I am showing you that you could put a flat roof here and store stuff above like as if you had like a little exposed attic there for additional sundries to be shoved up into that space. And here I'm just showing you that you could put your generators up here. I think these you'd probably have to take the perimeter wall down to put them there because that wall is blocking. But I'm going to place my scavenged solar panels here so that this house has power. I'm going to place two on this landing and then connect them 
and then connect them to a power connector on the roof of the house and that'll distribute the power throughout the entire house save for the one light I'm going to place on the porch which requires a direct connection and for that I'm going to be using the advanced power connectors. I'm going to place these cage bulb lights. You get them from Daily Ops but you could place different lights to your liking there as well. It's just to light the porch. Here I am connecting the power. Now they'll work. You have to move them and then replace them to get them to work sometimes. And so there's the front porch lit up. Everything is looking good. We're going to place our front door. This is a weathered front door variety. And that's another one that you can find in game. This is my kitchen. I'm going to show you how I'm setting this up because I want this stove to merge with the wall and I don't want those pipes exposed. I don't want it jutting out from the wall. I want the pipes in the wall. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can set it up so that the stove is right on the edge and then burn it and then place your wall and you're done. Or you can get a little fancier. I'm going to show you this first one. When you're doing this you have to be a little careful because if you push it too far back the wall will intersect with your stove in a really weird way. So you'll have to rebuild it and readjust it and then burn it again and then place the wall back on until you you get it where you want it. That's the first version. Now I'm going to show you the second version and this requires an item from the Atom Shop. In this version you're going to be using two red brick stucco wall columns. Now you can get this set in the Atom Shop. It includes the walls and the gate for 500 atoms. I don't know that it's gone on sale but I, I have no doubt that at some point in time it probably will go on sale. If not save your atoms from the scoreboards, you can use those or the atoms that you earn from challenges in game will pay for these defensive walls. It's, and they're really useful if you want to make a like if you want to make a chimney for your house. I'm gonna take two, I'm gonna stack them, and I'm going to merge them so that they look like one unified piece. And once I'm done merging them, I'm going to move them back over to the house place them where I want the chimney to be and then I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to modify this stove by merging it with this desk. We're going to put it in the center of this desk on the desktop and then line it so that it is perfectly aligned with the top of that desk. Take your time so that it's meeting the front of the desk and it's in the center and it's not off kilter. Just take it over to your pressure plate and merge the two items together. Once it's merged with a desk you can place it again where you like in the house. You can set it as close as you want to the edge. Once you have that placed you can then come in and you're gonna burn it and then you're going to place the merged red brick stucco columns that are going to serve as your chimney. You can place it right up against the edge of the foundation. You're going to burn it. Then replace all your walls and your kitchen area is done. So here it is, the completed cabin. As you can see, it's all lit up. I've decorated. I have a cash register vendor out front, but you can use the standard vendor. I've also tucked in a weapons workbench on the side. That side, you can place workbenches there. You just have to blueprint them and then place them. And the reason for that is that that raised walkway won't let you put things underneath. It'll pop it to the top. So if you blueprint it, they'll sit underneath. But that side is a good side for your workbenches. Here's the back porch. I've got some flamingos in the water. I lit up the porch with that dangling light that you can set the color for. But that is one that you will have to directly connect to your power. Let's take a look inside. Since it's a small build, it's not like we have to move through a lot of rooms. We'll open the front door. Here's the miniature living room. I've got a sofa, a safe, a radio, some guns hanging on the wall from display racks. Here's our kitchen that I've cluttered up with counters and a sink. Our stove area. With some more displays and a shelf and that stash that mounts to the wall which is an in-game item that you can get a plan that you can purchase the plan with bottle caps 
a little eating area, and the bedroom, which has everything cluttering it up that you could possibly want. I've got stuff on the walls. It's a small, cozy spot. It's not big. Very straightforward. We have a view out the window, a suitcase underneath the bed, some other boxes under the bed. We're going to open up this door out to the porch and take a look out on the porch. There's another sofa, some more plants, and our little balcony using this guard post that looks out onto the creek and the water purifier and the trees. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I enjoyed making this build and I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you learned something from it, more importantly. I wanted to make something for people new to the game that might look at some of the build videos and say, you know, I don't have that stuff or I'm a little intimidated to make something super complicated. And this is certainly not complicated. This is pretty easy. It's fair, fairly straightforward, and I think most people could build it. If you like what you see here, then click on that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're aware when new videos release. But until next time, happy building in the wasteland.